I grew up basically a short ways west of here in Grant County. I started school when I was five. There was a lot of flexibility at that point. I walked to first grade about a mile and a quarter away, one room school. And uh, went there one year and it was consolidated into the next township at that point. And uh, from there I went to Upland High School, which is later Jefferson Township High School, where I graduated. Now part of the Eastbrook system in Grant County. Well, Dad was my dad and mother were my mentors, and they're very interested in the world of Atha. Uh, strong believers in education. They only went to the eighth grade, which was a normal at that time. Both Dad and mother were born in the 1880s. One, an eighth grade education or common school, it was called at that time, it was the normal for people to have. And high schools didn't really come into vogue until probably the teens or twenties in Indiana. And that was the normal then. College, of course, was after that, but dad and mother so believed in education. They sacrificed to send all their kids to college. And that was by far the last one. But that was important. And you sat at my dad's table, you talked about what was going on in the world. He was a mentor. He had strong feelings uh, about lots of things. Opinionated, yeah. Uh, stubborn. Uh, but very dedicated and uh, believed that tomorrow should be a better day. And we came to the dinner table prepared to talk about what was going on in the world and how we made the world a better place. And uh, of course he was interested in politics. And uh, if you did not want to talk about this sort of thing, you went hungry. And I didn't miss many meals. I recently found a letter of a teacher I had in the eighth grade who, uh, knowing I was in a tough election early on, he wrote me a note and said, if you don't make it this time, don't give up. I believe in you. That sort of confidence from a former teacher it is, it does wonders for you. But I could uh, probably name a half a dozen mentors at Purdue who had a tremendous influence on our activity. And uh, my first time on the ballot was 1958. Uh, Governor Hanley was governor, and he decided in midterm he wanted to become a United States Senator. And it wasn't well accepted. And he said, uh, after he'd been beaten, that he's the only governor in Indiana history that had a vote of confidence in midterm. He got beaten badly <laughs> running for United States Senator. And in that election, uh, there were 79 members out of 100 in the Indiana House of Representatives who were Democrats. So I ran and won, and we had a lot of young, 30-year-old, idealistic uh, people fresh out of college, fresh off the farm, uh, fresh out of military service ready to change the world, and you made some changes. In our first session in 1959, here was this large group of young, 
idealistic, idealistic uh, people who wanted to change things. And one of the great needs at that time was the fact that there's a tremendous difference in the uh, programs offered rural schools and city schools in the state of Indiana. The rural schools were deficient. And we saw a need because we'd all grown up, those in leadership, in small country schools. Saw a need to set about to change that. We didn't know it couldn't be done. It had been tried for years and failed. So we passed the School Reorganization Act of 1959. And that probably, next to the GI Bill in Indiana, has had more influence on public education than anything that's gone on. If you see something that bothers you, in a way of a school board action or county council action or city council action or morality action that you don't like, express yourself, you know, politely. You don't have to beat the walls down, but uh, become involved and use what influence you might have to, uh, as my mother would say, make the world a better place. Well, they can. Young people can make a difference. And the great changes, if you look at the world history, the great changes uh, that have taken place in the world have come about by the actions of young people who were not happy with the way things were. And uh, as the wherewithal and the commitment to stand up and say, you know, together we can change things. Uh, do your preparation. Don't depend on politics for a livelihood. Build your base. Make sure you can make a living in some, in some way besides the political method of doing it. That means build a business or uh, be skilled at something, get a professional degree, law, education, whatever. Don't subject your family to the, the uh, parts of politics that might uh, not provide you a living, and then take up your cause. And if you believe strongly enough in something, you're going to attract attention and support. And the uh, satisfaction and redemption you get from that sort of activity is worth all the effort you put into it. An amazing uh, some public servant, servant once wrote me and advised me the next religion politics can be the most satisfying activity you can have I believe it